This video is going to be a film study preview where I focus on one element of the Seattle Seahawks Week 6 matchup against the San Francisco 49ers. Of course, it's a divisional collision, an important one. The Seahawks come in leading the division at 3-2. and two. They certainly don't feel good after dropping a home game to the Giants in Week 5. Nonetheless, they get Boye Mafe back at outside linebacker slash D-end. Derek Hall, who, who seems like he's good to go. Julian Love nursing a hamstring injury. Those three guys are questionable. I think if all three of them are able to go Thursday night, puts the defense in the in the best position to possibly stand up to the, the 49ers run game, which is obviously one of the best in the NFL. I think they're fifth in rushing yards. 4.6 yards per carry is perhaps middle of the pack. It's a little bit closer to like 12, 13 range. But fifth in rushing yards overall, fourth in passing yards. And for a, 40, for a Seahawks defense that's going to be without Reek Woolen, and Uchenna and Wosu again, they're in a difficult spot. Woolen was playing well at outside corner. Obviously, I think the numbers bear that out. The film does as well. This 49ers offense comes in 10th in the league in scoring, I believe, at 25.2 points per game. As an aside, Seattle is, in fact, 11th at 24.4. The 49ers run the ball a lot. Obviously, outside zone concepts, it's not... You, they don't only use outside outside zone. They are a diverse offense, but a little bit less grab baggy than the run game that the Giants brought to Seattle last week. San Francisco runs the ball about 30 times per game, a little bit more than 30 rush, rushing yards per game, in, and the Seahawks gave up 175 on the ground to the Giants. Simply put, if they're not able to hold this 49ers team significantly lower than the 175 they gave up against the Giants, they're in real trouble. Without Reek Woolen, the, the structure of the defense from a coverage standpoint might call for some some drastic measures from Mike McDonald, who generally wants to be in a too high safety look and still be able to stop or slow down the run game. The problem with staying in that too high look, it isn't just stopping or slowing down the run game. It's the time of possession. Last week, New York possessed the ball for 37 minutes. Really played keep away. And now... San Francisco comes to town with Jordan Mason, with Christian McCaffrey obviously being out. Jordan Mason's at 5.1 yards per carry, three touchdowns on the season, 526 rushing yards, 536 rushing yards, excuse me. We're going to look, take a look at some of the 49ers' best run concepts here in a moment and try to project how the Seahawks do try to stop them without opening themselves up to the pass. I do wonder if, without Woolen, they're going to play Devin Witherspoon at outside corner exclusively. And I have no idea. I don't I don't watch Seattle news or listen to other content or, or news reports, but it just makes me wonder if they're just not going to slide Witherspoon over there in Woolen spot and then use someone else as the nickel defender against 11 personnel. San Francisco, of course, will obviously will counter at times with 21 and 12 personnel. So you'll be in your base defense anyway, and Witherspoon wouldn't be the nickel because you'd be in your base four, three or base three, four, I should say. So let's look at some plays from last week against the Giants, just to talk about the different concepts that were used. And there's one element to this that I think actually kind of helps the Seahawks. In that San Francisco is not going to run as much duo as the Giants did. I mean, they basically bashed Seattle with duo against these and these wider defensive ends, outside linebacker, whatever you want to call them. They're just getting base blocked out. And so on the interior, you have a five on four. It's a simplistic way of looking at it in some somewhat. So the tackle is basing out on Hall. The tight end is basing out on 55. And in here, you have a five on four, not counting the quarterback. Four offensive linemen, ball carrier against two D tackles and two inside linebackers. If you don't get a seventh defender for one of those gaps, that backside cutback is going to be there. It's not the only run concept that, that the Giants use, don't get me wrong. In this case, you actually have a horizontal one. They're going to flip the back and run to the field. I think that the the outside zone actually kind of helps the Seahawks a little bit. Their defensive tackles, their edge defenders, particularly with Mafe there and Derek Hall, if he's good to go and healthy, I'd like to see them run the wide zone, the outside zone, I should say, a little bit more often and let Seattle's athletes run. They really had trouble with downhill stuff, particularly in the B-gap. Inside linebackers weren't able to get to fit it correctly against duo from an 11 personnel standpoint. San Francisco is going to be in more 12 personnel, more 21 personnel. So with base defense on the field, maybe Seattle's run defense will be improved. I don't know 
I'm not going to project it or try to predict it, to be honest with you. I just know that it's New York was more diverse with what they did. This is a wham trap play. I broke this down in a video that I did earlier this week. Trap concept where they're trapping a D tackle. Triple trap, some people call it, because you got three back blocks away from the point of attack. And then a running back cutting off the front side wham block. Let's see it one more time through. 49ers don't rely on concepts like this. They don't rely on duo as much as other teams. Like, for example, the Giants under Brian Dabble. More outside zone related. A log play where they pull the backside guard. Baker hits at 100 miles an hour, even though the, the backside inside linebacker Dotson knows where the play is going. He, he's pointing it out. I'm talking about number zero. Right hand side of the screen, he knows where the ball is going because he sees the light hand of the left guard, so he knows he's getting ready to pull. Still doesn't scrape over the top. You can see that same five-on-four dynamic accomplished in a slightly different way. You've got the base block on the wider defensive end, edge defender, base block there, five-on-four inside here, and Dotson unable to scrape over the top. Tyrone Tracy Jr. cuts it up 25 yards. Love and Woolen on the tackle. Love has got an injured hamstring. Like I said, Woolen will not play. Finally, a couple of other anomalous run concepts. This is a split back sweep play on third and one that a lot of teams in the NFL have copied from Ben Johnson of the Detroit Lions. More downhill run stuff. The duo run concept by the Giants ended up hitting on the backside often. When I say backside, I mean opposite of the direction where the running back stepped and the quarterback opened. So the quarterback opened to this side, and the running back initially stepped to this side, the left, and then he's going to bring it back through that B-gap that you can see developing inside of the base block by the right tackle. Same play, all 22 angle, then we'll show some film of the 49ers. If you're a Seahawks fan and you're watching this long, you first of all, you've got to be concerned that Reek Woolen is not playing. But it doesn't make sense for someone like that to come back from an ankle injury so soon, number one. Because it's going to be a physical football game. Number two, if you can't play, then then that then it is what it is. But point being, how much do you want to see them change the DB structure? Keep Witherspoon at nickel, and then put I think Nehemiah Pritchett uh, would be the the second outside corner along with Trey Brown out of eleven personnel, or let Witherspoon play outside corner and then use someone else as as the slot corner nickel defender. This is twelve personnel ace. Outside zone to the boundary. You actually do get a hold on uh, Debo Samuel that gets this called back. The wide receivers block well, number one. Number two, if you're going to use wide alignments against this team, it's going to cause problems. And and that is what, in fact, I think was one of the factors last week in the Seahawks having so much trouble with the Giants. These wide alignments, it's really like a 5-1 look. Three down linemen, two o OLBs, even though this is actually a second inside linebacker, and then a one stacked mic. So they're trying to kind of make it look like a 5-3 on the inside. Doesn't work. 44 gets cut off by the center. Here, additional to that, you've got the three technique is scooped or reached, excuse me. Mason hits it front side. Like I said, it gets called back for a hold on Debo Samuel. And then the 49ers come back and right, run the same exact concept the very next play, just to the opposite side. So Shanahan will do that. He'll stay with what's working. I'm not talking about Super Bowl uh, stuff at all here, but from the film that I have seen so far this year, like I said, they're fifth in the league in rushing yards, fourth in the league in passing as well, Thirteen, over 1,300 yards passing, I think, through five games. He will stay with, with what's working. Seattle, at some point, is going to have to change the dynamic from being in a too-high safety look to, it's not just that it's not that simple to just get into a one high safety. Look, I think they're going to have to run some stunts and get guys on the move. And I don't want to indicate that, that you just guess, but on some level you will. And when they give you information, you got to take it. 22 personnel, two tight ends on the field, high backfield, so a fullback. Generally, you're seeing the run concept go to the side where there's two eligible receivers. In this case, it's a tight end and a wide receiver. Huge gain for Mason, who looks explosive, not just explosive, but also very smooth. He, he does a great job of slalom running, so making a, a slight cut, hedging to one side or the other, but still gaining ground, getting downfield, hence the term slalom. Inside linebacker, in this case, I think it's Mosley, 
57, doesn't attack to the outside shoulder and basically make this running back have to cut downhill to the backside inside linebacker who is totally unblocked. So the inside linebacker position, defensive tackle, edge position, I mean, those that front six, front seven is up against a tall task going up against this running game, in my opinion. If they come in and they're able to stop or slow down the run game, of course you don't want to open yourself up to the play-action pass or third down play contest. But that's really where Mike McDonald's defense, his scheme can shine, is putting you in second and eight, putting you in third and seven, third and six, such that it's a known passing down. And now he can put you in the blender with, with all the different coverages they run. Didn't get a chance to do that Sunday against the Giants because the Giants ran for 175 yards. So they controlled the tone and tenor of some of the possessions and many of the play sequences, meaning each new first and 10 was creating a, a second and four, a second and five in some cases, a second and two. These guys block really well at the wide receiver position. Uh, they're well coached, obviously. They go get people when they're told to, and it helps create running lanes on the backside. In this case, Mason against the Patriots. They're leaving the boundary side corner unblocked. It's Christian Gonzalez. 12 personnel, kind of an influence on the backside here a little bit. Center is comboing up uh, to Peppers, who's playing inside linebacker. Downhill duo stuff, so somewhat similar to what you saw the Giants run many times against Seattle. With Julian Love, if he were to not play, then you're talking about serious depth issues, in my opinion, and you probably have to slide Devin Witherspoon to the nickel. There's a lot of good talent in the secondary for Seattle. They are now almost in the same position as the edge defenders were two weeks ago when they came to Detroit from the stamp, defensive front was, excuse me, in terms of how many injuries there are, guys dealing with injuries, Reek Woolen being out, Julian Love having a hamstring issue. In my opinion, they've the Seattle has got to slow down or stop the running game far better than they did last week against the Giants. Otherwise, San Francisco can come in there and get a whole lot done. The simplest way to do it, get people on the move. Stunt or slant defensive linemen at times, such that the, the zone blocking scheme is interrupted, you could guess wrong. But in some ways, you can't be wrong when you slant against the zone. You're either slanting into the zone or you're slanting with the zone. So if it's zone left from a defensive perspective and your D-line slants to the left, you're oftentimes going to get a cutback because your guys are going to be able to cross face of the offensive lineman trying to zone them. And it's going to create a natural cutback. Your inside linebackers and or backside safeties are going to have to fit off of that. If you slant into the zone, this is a little bit of an oversimplification with this one. If you slant into the zone, oftentimes you're going to get a bounce. So your job as a defensive coordinator or a defensive captain is trying to create a plus one player on the backside of that slant if you're slanting into it. Of course, you don't know pre-snap. The 49ers are unpredictable. Do it. Shanahan does a great job, obviously, of not just calling plays, but creating schemes that cause horizontal conflict from a run standpoint. We could run to either side of the formation and or conflict with the play action pass built off of it. Step number one for Seattle, in my opinion, has to get better at stopping the run Thursday night. Otherwise, it's going to be a really long night at home in front of their fans. In my opinion, I think Seattle has the talent to get it done. I think they're up to the task from a physicality standpoint, from a commitment standpoint. I do think we'll see we'll see improved run defense, even though, obviously, the 49ers' offensive line and their execution from a run game standpoint is generally better. It's more consistently good than the Giants' is. I think that's you know pretty obvious. You guys let me know what you think of the, the plays that I picked to show what the 49ers are capable of. The difference in the run game that they'll see, I think you'll see more outside zone, less duo. But perhaps Shanahan looked at the film of Seattle struggling with duo so much last week against the Giants, and he'll choose to utilize it more than he typically go does in, in, a, in an NFL game. Appreciate you guys' time, man. Let me know what you think of the video in the comment section, what your thoughts are, and the important keys that I've point, some of which I have pointed out. I didn't even really get an opportunity to talk about Seattle's offense against the 49ers' defense pass protection issues, and, and their own commitment to the run game from a Ryan Grubb standpoint has to change. 
They have to be able to possess the ball for longer stretches, keep their defense off the field somewhat so that the 49ers and their run game and explosive play-action pass attack don't wear Mike McDonald's defense down. Appreciate you guys' time.